Welcome to the Wayward Ornithopter and today we've got a brief introduction and walkthrough to Flight Plan. So within Free Flight 3, the control application for Parrot, Bebop and Bebop 2 drones, Flight Plan is an in-app purchase. It costs about £15 in the UK, about $20 in equivalent worldwide. And it allows you to preset a route before you even leave the house for your drone to fly. One of the advantages of this, particularly if you don't have a sky controller or a Wi-Fi extender, is regardless of whether or not you lose Wi-Fi connection, once you've set the drone flying a flight plan, it will work purely on GPS coordinates. Although if you are in Wi-Fi range, you can regain control at any time. So let's go into the flight plan. The first question it will ask is if you're on a Bebop or a Bebop 2, in my case it's a Bebop drone. The map will normally open centred on your current GPS location. I happen to have preset it to an area where I like to fly. Um, Castle Ring, it's an Iron Age hill fort surrounded by ramparts. It's about 3,000 years old and quite spectacular and a popular tourist place. And it's a nice place to fly with great forests around it and some really commanding views if you're flying from outside the hill fort toward the ramparts. So that's the site of flight I'm just going to set up today. Just to walk through the icons, top left is return, go back to the previous page. Padlock will lock and unlock the editing option, so you can't accidentally adjust your flight plan once you've set it. Next to that, currently ghosted out, is the detailed edit mode, which we don't have a flight plan set, so that's not available yet. Moving to the right hand side of the screen at the top, there's a target reticule. Clicking that will recenter the map on your current GPS location. And the next icon will change between standard map, satellite, and satellite with text views. There's the standard map, standard satellite map, and satellite map with labels. The file folder allows you to save and open flight plan. So you can create a flight plan and save it for later on, just open it up when you need it. So it works on the basis of establishing waypoints. So I'm going to just zoom in onto Castle Ring itself. I like to set off from the top right corner. And it's worth noting, you don't need to physically be at the first waypoint. If you're flying and the drone's already in the air, when you click play on a flight plan, the drone will fly to the first waypoint. I usually like to start the first waypoint wherever I know I'm going to be taking off from. And this top northeastern corner is a good place to start. And as you can see, there are some large trees. That pale green one's a sycamore, and I happen to know it's about 15 metres tall. So I'm going to click in the middle of that clearing, and my first waypoint's appeared. The number three indicates altitude in metres, and the arrow indicates the direction of flight or the direction the drone's facing. So it's facing due north and I'm happy with that. There are two ways I can adjust the altitude with the slider on the right but that's not very accurate particularly on a Diddy iPhone. I want to take it to 35 meters. So I move the slider to 35. What do you bet when I take my finger off? Yeah there you go it's adjusted itself. So a more accurate way is to press and hold on the waypoint and edit. And I'm going to take it to 35 meters. So if I'm flying somewhere in the zone and I hit play, it will fly to that point in the sky 35 metres above my takeoff point facing north. So I'm going to zoom out and find my next waypoint. And the flight I want to do today is to fly away to the northwest so that it can do a really nice fly in. In fact, I'm going to fly to the north. I'm going to fly. There you go. A couple of hundred metres. It's created a second waypoint where I clicked and by default that waypoint will have whatever characteristics were held by the previous waypoint, so 35 metres facing northwest. You can see that it's 223 metres and that line can also be adjusted for the speed of the drone. So if I press and hold where it says 223 metres I can either insert a new waypoint as a half waypoint or I can close it. As it is, I want to edit it because I want to change the speed. 
and that line is defaulted at 5 meters a second. Mm, pretty good speed. The maximum you can set it to is 10 meters a second. And I'm not bothered about filming this, I just want it to get out there to get the view coming back in. So I've upped it to 10 meters a second. And what I want to do now is while I'm flying that line, I want to increase the altitude to 55 meters. And I want it to be facing towards the ramparts. And I want to fly into the middle of the ring at that altitude. It's 172 meters, but I want it to fly nice and slow to get a good passing shot. So I'm going to drop that to four meters a second. Then we'll have a little jaunt over to the west side. Again, it's staying at 55 meters. Fly along this rampart. And then I want to close it by just flying directly back to where I started from. I could set it to land where it is now, but as I'm likely to be standing at waypoint one, press and hold and close, and it's taking it back to waypoint one. So that's a nice flight plan set. So let's go into the detail. To walk through this screen, I'll explain the icons in a moment. The top gray line is for camera actions, either take a video or take a picture. The middle line, the one with landing in green on the right hand side, is where you program it to take off, to land, to rotate on its axis for a nice panning shot, or to pause and hover midair. And the bottom line is to adjust the camera angle up or down. Now the shot I'm interested in is the fly in from waypoint two. So I'm not gonna film flying out, but I'm going to film after waypoint two. And I want the camera angled down slightly, so it's not just looking at sky and trees, but starting to take in the ramparts. And here I can adjust two things, the angle. I want it looking down at 20 degrees. And I want it to just tip straight down there at 30 degrees a second. If I lowered that to 10, you'd have a nice gentle lowering of the camera angle. And I want to film the entire rest of it. So as you'd imagine, dragging the red icon into the top square switch is the video camera on. Dragging the yellow in there will take photographs. Dragging the pause bit button down to the middle will hover for a set period of time. The blue upward arrow is take off, the green downward arrow is land. The blue circle is to rotate through however many degrees you want. If you just want a static panning shot you could pause, rotate through a panning shot and flick off photographs and you can set how often it takes a photograph. But that for me is okay. It's gonna zip along to waypoint two, switch the camera on and drop it down 20 degrees, then fly to waypoints three, four and five, and then back home. So I'm gonna lock that. It says that flight should take three minutes, 57 seconds. And I can save that if I want to. So to activate it, get your drone ready to fly and make sure your GPS is locked. Don't just check you've got the green signal, but look through the drone app in map view and check that your drone is showing up on the map where you physically know it to be. It can sometimes be five or 10 meters out, but it's surprising how often you can look and it thinks it's about two kilometers from where it is. It's all about the GPS signal and how long it's had to lock. So double check that before you start. Goes without saying, if you haven't got a GPS signal, this will not work and you'll probably lose your drone. The only other thing to mention is while it's following that route and whilst ever your drone is within Wi-Fi range, you can take over manual control. You can do this by pressing pause within free flight or going back into the normal flight mode and controlling your drone. And at any time, you can resume the flight plan by going back into flight plan and hitting play. So I hope that was helpful. Happy flying.